Hello everyone and welcome back to the Retro Recall. I hope we're doing awesome. Wow, 2023, where did it go? <laughs> the beginning of this year, Retro Recall started with one printer video and here we are 105 videos, almost 7,000 subscribers later at the end of 2023. Just goosebumps, just wow. I'm just so excited to have all of you supporting the channel. And if you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button because it makes a huge difference to help this channel grow even more. And if you haven't seen them, go back and look through all the year in review and all the videos. You got to see all the growth of the channel, different equipment being used, different editing techniques. And you know, this is the stuff that a channel does to grow. And so again, I couldn't have done any of this without you. Today's video is actually kind of funny how I stumbled across doing this and I was debating whether or not to do another video before the end of the year. And I thought, you know, why not? This is something that I really wanted to cover anyway, so let's do it. So I was going through some cleanup of the uh, kind of my storage area and where I have all my software and things like that. And I came across a really cool piece from 2005 that I had gotten back in the day. And it is Ubuntu or Ubuntu, however you want to pronounce it, Linux for human beings. So this is version 5.04 for Intel x86 architecture. So it'd be for the uh, Intel type or x86 processor base. And so this particular version of Ubuntu, and that's how I'm going to pronounce it because that's how I pronounce it, is uh, was released in April of 2005. And it was like the second version of the software uh, that came out. And my brother at the time was using Ubuntu uh, on his system. The first version, I believe it was. So the second version, you know, it was really cool. You just go online and you just say, hey, I want a physical copy. And they would just mail it to my house. I, I, I just go online. Here you go. We encourage this. So, <laughs> and, and having a physical copy is specifically something that was been around for a while, just sitting on my shelf. I, I, I don't even remember if I installed, I must've installed it, but I, I don't remember using it much. I'm not a big Linux user and it's something that's been asked on the channel quite a bit and something I want to explore a little more in 2024. I won't be going hundred percent in that direction for sure, but I definitely want to try it out and just see, uh, see what kind of features. Now, obviously if I'm trying out Linux for the first time, you don't go back to a version from 2005, but you know, this is the retro recall. And, you know, I figured trying out the operating system from back then would be pretty darn cool. So, you know what, we have lots to do. Let's get right to it. Welcome back. So as I was saying with this uh, version of software, this was the second version. This was, I think it was called Ori Hedgehog was the code name for this particular version of Ubuntu. And I mean, I, I'm going to get piles of comments on this stuff because I know nothing about this other than what I've researched. Hopefully we have some really, you know, Ubuntu and Linux uh, gurus on the channel that can definitely you know, keep everybody, keep me honest at the very least, uh, because I really appreciate the feedback. You know, this came out around the era of, you know, in 2005. So XP was already out. I believe XP came out in 2002. And then you have XP Pro 64-bit coming out in 2005 and later 2005. So this would have been around that time when XP is flourishing uh, prior to, of course, in 2007 when Vista started knocking on our door. And so, you know, this is something that uh, is just really neat. And Linux has always been one of those distributions or, or operating systems, I should say, that have been available to the market. It's open source, right? So if you don't want Windows, you don't want Mac OS, you can go and get a, a version of Linux for sure. There's lots of different distributions but this is one of the earlier ones from what I understand and uh, has been around for a while. And again, I know a few people who do use this, but I figured, you know, having a physical copy of this and, you know, this would have been mailed to me. Like I mentioned, just really cool to review on the channel for anybody who hasn't seen this. So again, as I mentioned, this is version 5.04 for Intel x86. And on the spine of it, it just says the exact same thing, as I said, on the front. On the back here, it says, what is Ubuntu? So Ubuntu is an operating system consisting entirely of free 
and open source software. With Ubuntu, you can surf the web, read email, re create documents, spreadsheets, and more. Ubuntu gives the power and flexibility for business and education at home or in the office. It's easy to install, free of viruses. Well, that's a bonus. And perfect for laptops, desktops, and servers. And that's actually surprised me because I just grew up in the world of Windows and Microsoft. And, you know, you have a certain version for home users. You have a certain version of uh, software for PC, you know, power users. And then you have, of course, the server environments, which would have different uh, breeds of software. But then to say, you know, you can throw this on the server and do what it would you know, a home user would have access to. It's quite interesting to look at. So Ubuntu is co a community developed, commercially supported, and offered free security updates. So the fact that it is supported by, a, like formally supported versus just, hey, it's free software, download at your own risk, is really, really neat. And then a new version is released every six months. So it's always keeping up to date the, the operating system and, and what have you. So Ubuntu is an ancient African word that means humanity towards others. It embodies the spirit of open source software, which is built by the best software practitioners for the benefit of all humanity. So I think that is pretty awesome. So you are legally entitled. So this is really neat and encouraged to copy, share, and redistribute this CD for yourself and for your friends. S share the spirit of Ubuntu. And then it says that it's sponsored by Canonical Limited for the information. You can go there. And then to request free Ubuntu CDs, visit shipit.ubuntu.com. I'm not sure if that still exists. I never tried it, but wouldn't it be cool if you just go online and say, hey, I want another physical copy of you know the latest version of Ubuntu. And I, I don't know, maybe, maybe you can. Uh, I think it's great. So we'll open it up here and we have two beautiful CDs here. So it says, here's the install CD and here's a live CD. So I didn't have much experience with live CDs outside of uh, Nopics that I had used in a few videos just because I was encouraged to during my e-waste testing videos to basically throw an operating system in just to make sure it becomes stable. So over here for the install CD, I mean, it's pretty, that's what we're going to be using today is use a CD. If you want to install Ubuntu on your computer to install Ubuntu, put the CD in the CD-ROM drive, turn it on or restart the computer and follow the directions on the screen. So we're definitely going to be doing that. And then the default installation will erase existing software and data from your computer. That's fine. However, an expert installation mode is available. If you want to keep your existing files, we're going to be wiping everything. We're not going to worry about any of that because uh, again, we're just going to show the purpose of today's video is just show the installation and poke around a little bit in the operating system. And then the live CD, of course, it contains a test Ubuntu system that you can try safely without altering any files on your computer. To try it, put the CD in the drive and turn on and restart the computer. The CD also contains Windows versions of some of the programs included in Ubuntu. To try these programs, put the CD in drive while Windows is running. That's pretty darn neat to say, okay, you know what? If you want to try some of the software before you even think about switching to this, we have Windows version of this, everybody. So pop it in install it and you'll be able to utilize it. So I think that's pretty, pretty darn neat. And then we already saw the back of course. And yeah, it's free. It's encouraging you to distribute it, telling you everybody, get everyone on here. Um, pretty confident this is on archive.org, but if it's not, let me know down in the comments. I'm happy to image this disc and put it online. Okay, so I'm gonna get the bench set up with a PC. It's just one of the other PCs I had from, like I said earlier, an e-waste video that I did. I haven't restored this computer. It was just something I saw that was early enough that I was like, okay, well, that might work for it because the system requirements for this is just the x86 environment, of course, architecture for the CPU. 32 megabytes of memory and 100 megabytes of hard disk space. And to think that this came out in the Windows XP era is pretty, pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna get the bench all set up and we'll continue on. Okay, and welcome back. And you can see here, we have our trusty IBM Aptiva desktop PC that we had saved from eWaste. If you have not seen that video, check it out right there. That allows you to go in and see what uh, what was basically on this computer. You know, I did take an image of this computer just before I started this process because this does have all the recovery partition on it. And I'm not sure, I haven't been able to find the exact recovery partition discs, image discs for this PC. And as you know, I like to have the original restorations if possible. So we're going to get started here. And this is just an IBM Aptiva 2020 
uh, sorry, 2270, which is an Intel Celeron PC designed for Windows 2000 and 98. I believe it has 300 and change uh, megabytes of memory. Um, and the hard disk, I believe, is 10 gigs. So uh, lots of space, lots of room, no issues here. And this should be a system that was, you know, definitely before XP and uh, should definitely <laughs> run this for sure. But I wanted to pick it up, something that was, you know, old enough that this disk and the drivers that are contained within it would be able to detect everything that we have in the system. The other thing I'll, I'll call out is I was just, while I was getting this computer kind of already, I looked in behind this disk and it said here, I, cause I gave the system requirements earlier as 32 megabytes and hundred megabytes of disk space. Well, it's actually 350 megabytes of disk space. And then it says here, 1.8 gig for typical installation. So definitely, you know, I was wrong <laughs> when it comes to this specifically, it is 1.8 gigabytes required. So I wanted to clear that up from earlier. So I had the disc in my hand and the disc is in absolute perfect condition considering the age of it. And that's what, again, leads me to believe I haven't used this much. So I'm gonna turn the computer on, eject the disc drive, it'll pop it in and it should automatically detect the disc and boot uh, Ubuntu for us. So let's see what happens. Beautiful IBM logo, love IBM equipment. I don't care what form factor or who made them for them at the time, things like that. I just love all things IBM. Uh, really cool. I just recently received a CRT IBM. I'm using the HP for today for the sake of recording and doing the video, but I did get uh, one of those from Aaron. So thank you so much, Aaron. I'm going to be taking that, um, that CRT apart to clean it out and do a video on it itself because it, I'm not even going to dare boot it up right now with, and you'll see why in the video when I go to do that. So it says here, Ubuntu, here we go. Beautiful splash screen on the screen loaded up from the CD. The default installation is suitable for most desktop or laptop systems. Press F1 for help and advanced installation options to install only the base system type server, then enter for the default installation, press enter. So I'm going to press F1 for the help and advanced installation options, just because it gives you a little more variety uh, to see here. If I just hit enter, I think it's just going to do a plain install. So I hit F1 and see what comes up. So this is in Ubuntu 5.04 installation CD-ROM. So there's the Ori Edgehog there that, uh, that we have uh, built on 2004 1227 Ubuntu 24. So it just gives the build information. So there's a help index F1 through F10. And so it says press F2 through F10 for details or enter to boot. So, I mean, you have the ability by using this disk. So nothing has been altered on the system just yet. So you can go F1, this page for help index. I mean, you can see everything on the screen here, but what are the prerequisites for installing boot methods for specific ways of using the CD-ROM? boot perimeters, overview, things like that. So just really to give you an idea of what it's going to do, we're just going to hit enter to boot. So it's loading the required files. It's just really cool to look back at some of the older operating systems. I mean, I've done videos on Windows 3.1, Windows 95, Windows 98, Windows Millennium. I know Millennium, everyone loves Millennium. Anyway, I've done all those videos and you know, I have Windows 2000 even I've done and I love doing those types of videos, but it's even more exciting for me for this I am not a Linux user. I have not touched this in arguably years, uh, over a decade. So I definitely want to take a look. It says here, please choose a language you would like to use. So we'll hit English for enter. Based on your language, you are probably located in one of these locations. So United States, we're gonna choose Canada because that's where I am. And it keeps on booting here. So your, your keyboard is American English, that's fine. Find your layout by pressing the home key, select the full keyboard list, that's fine. So it's going through a, basically just a scan of all the hardware in this computer. The computer itself is older than the software version that's on the disk. So it should detect all the drivers that we need for the installation. I just love the look of the IBM towers. Okay, it says no network interfaces were found. The installation system was unable to find network device. You may need to load specific module for your network card. If you have one for this, go back to the network hardware detection. We're good. I, I don't remember. I th there might be built on ethernet on this. I'm not sure. I don't care. That's fine. We'll say continue for now, but ideally you'd go back and be able to configure the system to detect the network card, right? So it says, please enter host name for this system. The host name is a single word that identifies your system to the network. If you don't know what your host name should be, consult your network administrator. We're fine with just using Ubuntu for what we're doing. We're just using the default options. 
This installer can guide you through the partitioning a disk for use by Ubuntu, or if you prefer, you can do it manually. If you choose to use the guided partitioning tool, you will still have a chance later to see the results, customize it, or even undo the partitioning. Oh, there you go, if you don't like it. So erase entire disk, that's what I wanna do, or manually edit. We're gonna erase entire disk, because I've already taken an image of the disk that's in here, again, because of the IBM partition that's in there. So erase entire disk, Let's see if it warns you. Yeah, that does. Okay, good. So if you see, so in case you accidentally did that and went, oh my goodness, I got to go back. So if you continue, the changes listed below will be written to the disk. Warning, this will destroy all data and all partitions if you have removed as well on the partitions that are going to be formatted. So the partition tables of the following devices are changed. So IDE 1 master, so that's HDA that's on there. So the following partitions are going to be formatted to partition 1 and partition 5. Write the changes to disks. We are. So it forces you to have to hit a button and then hit yes before before we do it. There we are. All my data is going. <laughs> that's re reconfiguring the drive. And that's uh, great that the software does this for you. Now, this is the advanced version. I'm pretty confident that the standard version would probably walk you through this as well, based on our, our options at the beginning of the setup, because I can't imagine moving forward without at least giving you that option. There we go, installing the Ubuntu base system. It's just need to see the different operating systems and their installation uh, type and in environments as we as we go through. And you know, as years advance, we we begin to forget about these older ones. Why? I mean, why would we need to use them? Well, that's what the retro community is for. We were able to bring all this back and use DOSBox and all the different emulators and things like that. If you don't have genuine hardware to run this stuff on, okay. So I'm going to let this install, and we will be back for a jump cut to go to the end of this installation process. Okay, and we're back from all that wonderful installation process. And we're coming up now, it's asking for the time zone configuration, pretty standard in our operating system to ask you these questions. So the following are common time zones in Canada. So we'll choose Atlantic, which is where we are. Enter a full name for the new user. So the retro recall. User account will be created for you to use instead of the root account for non-administrative activities. Enter the full name of the person who will be using this account. So we'll hit enter. And then select a username for the new account. Your first name is a reasonable choice. So the retro recall. Username should start with a lowercase letter, which can be followed by any combination of numbers and more lowercase letters. So we'll just have the retro recall. Ask for a password. We'll put that in there. Finish the installation. The first stage of this installation process is complete. Your computer will now reboot and install more packages. Make sure to remove the installation media, CD-ROM and floppies, all right, so that your system boots from the disk to which Ubuntu was installed. So I remove the disk, close the drive, hit continue. And here we are after about, I don't know, 40 minutes of real time when you guys saw all within 45 seconds to a minute there. 
but uh, but yeah, it's looking pretty darn good here so far. So it's asking me for my username, choosing a language, session. I have an option to reboot, shut down, and then it shows Ubuntu and the date and time down in the bottom right-hand corner, which is pretty cool. All right, for my username, we have the retro recall. And password is my super fancy password. Super secure. Okay, this is the first time we're loading up. It says incorrect username password. Oh my goodness, let's see, let's see if we can do this again. Uh, okay, and maybe I typed a capital. Not sure, hopefully that's it. No, of course not. Uh, maybe it's because I had capital letters in there. There we are. Jeez. <laughs> Can't remember my own super fancy password. I think my username had capitals and I think it didn't want that. So we're going to pass that on. So here we are. So Ubuntu Linux for human beings was so loading up all the different uh, modules, applications. I don't know what they're specifically referred to as. Okay. So we are come to a, to a desktop so to speak. And I realize that there's uh, different ways to use this. You can definitely use the command line interface as well if you wanted to, but where we're <laughs> just being introduced to this today for myself, even uh, bringing back some memories here, we're going to stick to the uh, interface that we see. I'm just going to adjust the screen a little bit so we can have a better view of what's going on here. Okay, and here we are back to a different angle of the camera, just so it's easier for everyone to see what's going on here. All right, so we have a couple of taskbars. We have an, a taskbar along the top and along the bottom. And so along the top, we'll start. And forgive me if I refer to any of these in incorrect terminology, everybody, because I come from the Windows world. And uh, if anything, this is great entertainment for you. So I'm gonna click on the little, what looks like a little foot here, but I have no idea. So we'll click on applications as accessories. So we have archive manager, calculator, character map, dictionary, and text editor. So really cool to see all these different applications as part of the environment. And so I'm just gonna click on that. And under games, we have Isle Riot Solitaire, Atax. Oh, it even gives you, <laughs> gives you a description of the uh, game. So I highlight over it and it says here, uh, play the casino card game Blackjack, five or more. If I just don't move my mouse, remove colored balls from the board by forming lines. Four in a row, complete to make lines the same color. So it's like Connect Four, I guess. It's a similar game that would be uh, that would be here. New game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I love it already. Is it that easy? Come on, we'll put one there. There we go. Come on. Oh, come on. I can get this. I have a feeling they're going to... Yeah, there we go. Okay, anyway. There we go. I, I, I tragically lost in the uh, in the Connect Four game. That's no indication of what I am like in real life, though. I'm pretty good at it. Okay, under games. So we'll continue on. So we have no metrics. <laughs> Let's highlight over that. It says fit falling blocks together. So it's like Tetris. Oh, no metrics. I, I said metrics. Metris. There we go. Uh, I've skipped free cell, but that's pretty self-explanatory. Play game of reversi, and we have. Solve puzzles by sliding blocks around. So like one of those little games, I imagine that I used to have one handheld one when I was younger. Uh, Mahjong or Mahong, uh, disassemble a pile of tiles by removing matching pairs. Mine, so good old Minesweeper. <laughs> Nibbles, guide a worm around a maze. Robots, avoid the robots and make them crash into each other. Same gnome, remove groups of balls and try to clear the screen. Stones, Collect diamonds while avoiding falling boulders. Tally or tally, tally. Play a poker style dice game and Tetravex. Play a puzzle game that matching tiles together. Yeah, I remember a lot of these games. Uh, obviously, you know, they're not going to name them the exact same name as what they were. I mean, Blackjack is just classic. But, you know, they, they can't, right? Because of different copyrights and things like that. But really, really neat to see that these are all included within the, uh, the operating system. Okay, under graphics, we have GIMP image editor. So I do have this installed on one of my newer systems, specifically for Windows for editing thumbnails and things like that for YouTube. Uh, G thumb image viewer, so just view and organize your images. I love how it gives you description over it. That's awesome. View and many different types of images. So another image viewer and PostScript viewer, view PostScript files and then Xsane image scanning program. So I actually was never familiar with this software until another YouTuber, Tech Tangents, 
specifically was using Xane and did actually did a video on it as well. So he uh, live streams on Twitch and again uh, through YouTube, but was using this for the HP 4C and another scanner he had to be able to scan because it worked better with this version versus some of the newer scanning software. So definitely something I would like to try out on this computer as well. Internet. Evolution Mail, so read and write emails, Firefox web browser, we all know what that is. Game Internet Messenger, so multi-protocol messaging client, Genome, or Gnome, uh, BitTorrent, download files of BitTorrent, Gnome Meeting, um, talk to people over the internet, Terminal Server Client, and XChat IRC, so an IRC client. Ah, the days of MIRC, I remember that. Office, so include Open Office. So Open Office is something I had used quite a bit over the years, regardless of it being part of this environment. So uh, I'm very familiar with that, but just a version of Microsoft Office, but it's open office, open source. Sound and video, we have CD player, music player, recording level monitor, sound, juicer, CD ripper, extract music from your own CDs. Sound recorder, totem or totem, movie player, so play movies and songs. Volume control and volume monitor. This is pretty darn cool to have all this as part of the operating system. I, I don't know why I never stuck with this, to be honest. I was just, I guess I was just a Windows person back in the day, and that's what I grew up on, and I just stuck with it. But um, interesting to see all this. It'd be interesting also to try out later versions of Ubuntu or, you know, different variants of it. So definitely something that's going to be on my bucket list. System tools, so add remove programs, bug report tool, configuration editor, file browser, so like file explorer, file manager. It even says that with the file manager. Floppy formatter. There we go. We can floppy or format our floppy disks. Network tools, uh, network information tools, new login, root terminal, run as a different user. Uh, if I want to run as an administrator, I think my profile set up is at it anyway, but I believe there's an administrator root to this, um, to Linux. Uh, system monitor, terminal, and Ubuntu device database. Wow, this is really, uh, really awesome. Places, this is pretty cool. So we have our home folder, our desktop. Computer, let's click on computer and see what's in there. So we have our floppy drive, our CDRW drive, and I forgot that it was a CDRW drive that's in the system. Then we have our file system as well, and then we can do different things within those locations. Um, let's move that down. I'm just intentionally leaving things open to see how the system works. So we have our network servers, our connect to a server, and then search for files as well. So system, so we have preferences. So in here, you'll be able to go in and configure all of your different, uh, basically your, your, your environment when you're in here. So CD database server, let's hover over that. That's modify your CD database server preferences, okay? Desktop background, so change the background settings. Uh, file management change how files are managed, our font, keyboard, keyboard shortcuts, menus and toolbars. So you can go in and configure it. Basically, it's like a control panel. Um, your mouse, multimedia system selector. So configure defaults for GStreamer applications. I don't know what exactly GStreamer is, so I have to look into that. Network proxy, Palm OS devices. It actually has a dedicated area for Palm OS. I mean, when you think about it, PDAs back in the early 2000s and 2005 were very, very popular. And uh, before, you know, the advent of smartphones really came to, you know, the top of the market. But interesting to see that that's built into the operating system. Preferred applications, remote desktop, pretty self-explanatory, removable drives and media, screen resolution, Screensaver, Sessions, Sound, Theme, and Windows. So the different windows and how they interact. Now, I did right-click on the background here earlier before I started recording the segment, and I, I don't have any other... There's no other backgrounds. There's this one, and there's a different resolution one as well. Okay, so, I mean, something I should have done while we're doing this, never thought about it, but uh, is adjusting the resolution so that everybody can see. So it gives us a little different... Uh, yeah, I mean, even if you're coming from Windows, I mean, this is pretty darn easy to navigate, which is which is good. And I love how, you know, you can continue to access the different commands up top, but as you load up applications, down below it starts populating in this taskbar down below. Okay, under system, we'll go under administration, device manager, just check that out real quickly. Now, I don't know what's installed, what's not installed. I mean, again, I'm not used to utilizing this particular interface for the operating system, but you can see all the different, um, I mean, that's within the BIOS, but you have your, your BIOS, your memory, your processor, so under advanced, gives you all the different breakouts of your memory, your processor, so there's our Celeron, genuine Intel, or 128 kilobytes of cache I'm seeing here, legacy floppy drive, pretty straightforward, ISA bridge, IDE, 
broken down into your host controllers. So you have your ID device, which is our Fujitsu, and then it shows our different volumes and how they're broken up and uh, basically what the sizes are for them. And then under our ID E host controller for our CDRW. So it's CD-W54E. USB is installed here. So we have our USB hub interface, our AC97 audio is installed, pretty straightforward. And our graphics, uh, I believe our graphics is just, uh, I believe, yeah, just Intel is uh, our Intel built in uh, graphics there. Okay. So under administration, we have login screen setup, networking, printing, shared folders, uh, synaptic, package manager so install remove and upgrade software packages all right so you want to install other software or other pre-built packages for ubuntu specifically time and date update manager and users and groups obviously i can do updates to this operating system it's currently offline which i'm totally fine with for now but it would be cool to get this on the network i know it was complaining about that earlier under network settings and then so, I mean, obviously it wasn't detecting the network card. I don't think there's a network card in this computer actually. So it's obviously not gonna detect it. And it's also not detecting anything over here on this side either. So it'd be something I'd have to install. And then obviously it would generate network, get it on the LAN, uh, but an operating system this old, I'm not sure if that's wise to do, but anyway. Okay, so take a screenshot. Well, there we go, of your desktop if you need to. Help, about GNOME, uh, about Ubuntu, lock screen, log out. And then let's see what else we have here. Let's hover over here. So some shortcuts. So we have our Firefox web browser. What version is installed on here? That's uh, going to be interesting to see. And uh, while we're waiting for that to load, the Evolution Groupware Suite. I don't know what that is exactly. And then get help. There we are. We have the Mozilla Firefox. And it talks about the release. And it says 1998 to 2005 version 1.0.2. Well, there you go. <laughs> There's the version of Firefox we have installed natively with Ubuntu version 5.04. So we're going to close that for now. I just love how easy it is to use this operating system. Again, I don't know why I didn't uh, really choose to use it. Maybe I was just, again, I was so ingrained in Windows at the time. So I'm bringing this up. I'm just loading up the uh, Evolution Setup Assistant. So your next few screens will allow Evolution to connect to your email accounts and import files from other applications. Okay, uh, obviously I'm not on the network, so I can't do this. So let me know down in the comments what uh, Evolution Setup Assistant is, or specifically Evolution uh, Groupware Suite. Okay, so that's great. So up here we have the sound or volume control, which you can go up and down. Obviously it did detect the sound card, no problem. So we have our line out and our speaker if we want. We want to capture audio. Oh, that's pretty awesome that we can do all that from within here. And uh, yeah, that's pretty, pretty cool. And then you can choose your different uh, devices if you had multiple. That's really, really neat. And then we have our date and time. I'm not thinking the time zone is correct, to be honest. Let's go adjust date and time. No, uh, is that in here? Yeah, the time zone. Uh, it is detecting the time zone correctly. The time's completely incorrect. Um, so, I mean, I'm not going to change it. There's no point, but the date is correct. It's New Year's Eve. So there we are. Okay. Down the bottom left-hand corner here, we have click here to hide all windows and show the desktop. What an innovative feature. <laughs> I mean, that's something that, uh, you know, we, we took for granted for quite a while in, in windows, but, uh, it's just awesome to see. And as you can see, as I mentioned earlier, as you load specific, uh, applications, as you, you know, you're clicking on things and they're loading up, it starts to populate. Uh, down below and i like how it says starting firefox and then populates it down below here and I, again i just love i'm loving this loving this interface I, I, again i should have used this anyway okay uh and then down here it looks like you can have multiple desktops i mean again that's something that would have come out later in other windows environments but the fact that it's something that's populated already in 2005 that's pretty neat and then we have no items in trash so we do have a trash bin here so we can remove it from the panel there it is there we can open it about even i don't know about just version it is there we go now we can give credits to who who helped make it that's awesome yeah i don't know i mean i think i think overall i mean it's pretty snappy obviously i chose an older system to run this just because of the hardware compatibility i didn't don't know enough about this to really go down that road to be able to say hey let's go online and and download updates to this i don't know probably doesn't even have updates for this but uh, essentially you know one of the things i hear a lot about is compatibility with linux to make sure that the hardware manufacturers are developing software for this operating system 
I'm pretty, uh, yeah, I'm pretty impressed with the environment and it definitely brings back memories. I don't remember using it a lot as I stated, but I obviously have it. I would have installed it and, you know, it's starting to look a little more familiar as I click around and use it, um, which is, uh, again, pretty cool. But I mean, overall, I'm rewinding back to 2005 would have been a pretty cool operating system to use, but keep in mind Windows XP was uh, quite nice as well at the time and even arguably turned out to be one of the greater operating systems for Microsoft. So again, it, it was competing with that at the time, if you say competing. I mean, this is open source if you chose to go this direction. But yeah, no, I'm very, I'm very impressed with this so far. So let's get the different view going on here and we'll uh, do our outro. And here we are back to the, what we had started with. And I'll tell you, I'm impressed with this setup. I, I actually really like the operating system. I mean, it's very easy to use coming from a Windows user going into this. It just makes it feel really good. Now, if this is where I want to stay, I realize there's other ways and other things you can learn in Linux, specifically, you know, utilizing the command line interface and much more uh, powerful tools that you're able to utilize with in this environment versus, you know, you have, you have more control over this environment is what I'm trying to say. You know, I've heard a lot of great things about this stuff and uh, really want to start digging into it. And I'm sure, again, I'm going to have piles of comments of things I did wrong throughout this thing. But again, remember, I own this. I wanted to show everybody what this experience would have been like back in 2005, showing off version 5.04 of Ubuntu. And uh, yeah, I mean, it doesn't disappoint. I'm really excited to uh, have click around in here. I was playing around. Obviously, you can see I was doing some things and I, I just really like it. It's just something new and different, but also something retro from the past. And, you know, really excited to even spark my interest in potentially looking at this in current environments because I understand that it still exists today. So something that's going to be in my bucket list for 2024 to go over and experience. That said, if you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. We're almost hitting 7,000 subscribers at the end of 2023. Wouldn't it be cool if we hit that today? Hit the notification button, change it to all. You'll be notified of new content such as this. Please leave a comment down below. I love reading all the comments. Love the interaction on the channel. Did you, do you use Ubuntu today? You know, did you have this specific version 5.04? And, you know, let me know your experiences because again, I, this is my first type Linux video on this channel and I really want to hear the comments down below. Always making new content. Happy new year to absolutely every one of my viewers. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.